Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Betsy. I'm Ridley. Welcome. We're really excited to show you our house here at 54 Trad in Charleston, South Carolina. So come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. I'm Ridley Wills and I'm an architect and I run the Wills Company, a home renovation, design, build, construction company in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm Betsy Wills and I work in branding and marketing for Diversified Trust. And today you're going to take a tour of our home here in Charleston, South Carolina. Well, the house was built in 1787. Um, it was um, a post office for the city it was the main post office from 1800 to 1812. We're sitting in the post office, literally, for the house. It was in the old walled city of Charleston. It's undergone many renovations over the years, and we had the opportunity a couple years ago to purchase it and renovate it for our family. We moved in in March of 2023, but we had uh, actually occupied it for an additional year while we did our plans and renovated it. Well, we had numerous changes to make when we bought it. Um, it didn't have much lighting. It was so dark. <laughs> painted all brown. Um, it had very few bathrooms in the house and it needed an elevator. It's a four story house. And uh, we're not getting any younger. We're not getting younger. <laughs> and my, my parents need to come and we just needed an elevator. And so bathrooms, all the systems had to be redone and um, a pretty extensive renovation. I wanted to have a house that was on high ground and had not flooded in Hugo. It was masonry and was historic. And so this fit all those needs and I could see the potential immediately. I, it, it takes me about two seconds to figure out what needs to happen. So I was sold took a while for her. <laughs> well, uh, this is actually our second home, uh, but we've been coming to Charleston for over 30 years. My best friend in the whole world lives here, and it's always been a dream to, to get to come to a city that was so historic. Um, it's a walkable city. I think that was really, really the draw. And we love to eat. We love to eat. <laughs> Plus, uh, you know, which you have to do in Charleston like it's your job because there are new restaurants opening all the time. But the real, you know, plus here is that you can walk everywhere. Um, in Nashville, that it's a driving city. So to be able to come here, give up the car for a while, do a lot of walking in the sunshine, it's, it's really fun. Also, Southwest Airlines flies here and it's just a one hour flight. So that's key. Welcome to our home. We're in the front entry hall. This is the original staircase, the original floors of the 1780 house. This is really typical to have a side entry in these Charleston single houses, isn't that right? Yes. Yeah, so one thing I think you'd enjoy seeing is this painting actually by an artist whose name is David Henri Anderson. He's a young artist and uh, what's very unique about it is he actually paints it twice. All the white lines you're gonna see are where he's not touched the canvas. So he paints it once white and then he makes the, a lot of the paints from uh, objects out of his garden, such as walnut shells. I mean, it's fascinating what he, he can do. So we framed it with a backlight and it actually changes colors constantly. Um, we go from uh, white to blue to green. Um, it's all, it all just changes all the time for the people who want to come look at it and they're usually very mesmerized by these colors. Another thing that's interesting about a lot of homes in Charleston is they tend to have a little closet that people have converted into a bathroom. So you're going to have to watch your step and watch your head going in here because it's so t -nitesy. But the wallpaper we actually had hand done in Kentucky by a couple who makes hand marbleized wallpaper. So it makes a really small space very special when you can decorate it with something so unique. So right off of the entry hall, we have our formal living room. 
And this is, a, uh, we mentioned it was the original post office and this would have been where all the business was conducted. I always think about all the people who must have come in here to get letters from home, from England, good news, bad news. And when, it's, when you say the post office, what it means is the postmaster lived here. And so he just, all the mail for the, or, or packages for the, coming from Europe would, or the Caribbean would arrive here and people would come and get their news from abroad. So this room is, is, has some of the original paneling. Uh, this is all cypress paneling. Um, all the wainscoting is, two, is, simp is made of two boards. So um, you, it dates it. I mean, you can see how wide those boards are. Um, it was painted long before we ever arrived, however. It's not my fault. <laughs> this is a wonderful painting by a friend of ours, Duke Hagerty. He is a surrealist painter. And he lives around the corner and this is called Alpha, and there is another large painting called Omega, and I had to beg him to uh, let me buy it. But uh, I've known him actually 30 years. He was a plastic surgeon prior to becoming a painter, and, or a full-time painter, and I just absolutely love his work. It reminds me of Miro. Um, it's very surrealist in nature. And I actually bought this wonderful little <laughs> statue at an antique sale one time. I think it was made in Africa, but I love the, the combination of these two on this sideboard. This is a sideboard uh, actually that was done by R.Y. Auguste, a, a French company, but I love the architectural elements of that. And it's, it's very modern, but it really works in this house that's got so much history. And we added lighting in here. I mean, believe it or not, it was dark before, so it makes it much brighter. And this is one of our favorite pieces. This is by um, Herb Williams. We commissioned it. It's called Yellow Dog. It's made of 10,000 yellow crayons and it's got a little blue collar. And he's always greeting people walking by. We always see people peering in the window, uh, attracted to the little yellow dog. Well, actually the artist uh, was wanting to do a piece and I said, do whatever you want. And he said, I'm dying to do a yellow dog. I guess he had a golden retriever or something like that. And I said, anything you wanna do. I always think it's best when you're commissioning a piece to let the artist really speak to you about what they wanna do instead of forcing your own vision onto them. So we love this little guy. Well, this is the front door to when this was a commercial space, the post office. So people, really would, have loud. Come in, people would have come in this door from Trad Street. The front entry hall was the family entrance. So. And down here is our little mail slot we talked about. Um, it's always fun when people have left you a little note from meeting you the night before or coming over for a drink. The fireplace is large and a typical of this era, of this Georgian house. And so this is a bench from my parents house a, a, a old 1790 house in uh, williamson county tennessee and so the furniture here we had in our apartment actually but it's it's so wonderful it's by uh, a company called george smith that's english and it's meant to last forever i adore it um and so we were able to bring sort of this furniture from a, another spot and just plopped it right down in here and worked around it um, the coffee table is fascinating. Um, it's hard to see it, but this was made in New York by uh, a company that uh, is a, a man and his son, and it's called the Constellation Table. And if you get really close to it, you'll see etchings of the Zodiac. I work for uh, a company called Diversified Trust, and I do the marketing and branding for the firm, which I love doing. Uh, we have about five offices, so when we decided to buy this place in Charleston, we actually opened an office here. So I have the benefit of being able to go back and forth and work from both places. My whole life I've loved old houses, and so I went to University of Virginia School of Architecture and majored in historic preservation. Um, during that time, I even bought an old house in Nashville and renovated it and hired a contractor just to follow them behind with a broom to learn what they did. When I got out of school, I became opened my own firm and I started renovating houses. And I've done it for 35 years and we maintain and restore houses all over Nashville. And um, I love it, it's my passion. And he's really good at it. We're now in our dining room. This room used to be almost a third or more bigger than it is now. And this is where we were able to install the elevator. So there's an elevator, a storage closet and a vestibule to the back part of our house. And it really is a beautiful dining room and it, you don't miss the size. So we're really happy with it. So it was great because uh, when we bought the house, we were able to reuse quite a few things that were already here, including this beautiful chandelier, which is very traditional. 
but as you can see we've sort of tried to mix it with some contemporary art such as this piece right here by uh, a, a woman artist um, whose name Ashley is Oubre. Ashley Oubre. And what's fascinating is this is actually a drawing done with dry ink and she uses makeup brushes to create these layers and layers of surface and this beautiful rendering of this gorgeous woman who I think is like a Madonna. I absolutely love it. And I love the detailing on her sweater and her beautiful facial expression. So it's a real prize in my collection anyway. The curtains were also here. We recut them so that they would work. Um, we, you know, took From a lot the of the 90s. Yeah, we took a lot of the heaviness down. There used to be two panels on each side and we thought it'd be more modern to just do one panel. And I'm really pleased with the result. So these dining chairs were actually in our house in Nashville and they were sort of a dull gray color. And I picked out this wonderful kind of cut velvet uh, cantaloupe color because I wanted to bring that pop of, of newness to the room yet this is one of those colors that in Charleston seems to be everywhere on the exterior of houses etc a little bit brighter in the in the case of these chairs but it's reminiscent of the look of the city the candlesticks were given to me by a friend they were her mother's it's a very dear friend who um, had no place to put them and she wanted to share them with me so I love that kind of thing in a house where you've got items from special people in your lives and every time I pass by them I think of her so uh, and then I was with her as well when we were in Florida and bought these uh, wonderful toll flowers that are made in Mexico uh, they're from a place called Casa Gusto and a lot of people ask me where you can get them so you can go to Casa Gusto and uh, order your some order some for yourself and in a second home it's really nice to have something floral that's going all the time so when we arrive there there's always seems to be the appearance of some fresh flowers uh, these are of course fakes but i love the the look in this room tonight we're could transforming this room into a party for 12 and putting a big uh extending this table and friends are bringing in extra chairs and if you want to see what's cooking i can take you into the kitchen it's cooking right now <laughs> betsy and i met uh, I had just moved back from New Orleans to Nashville and Betsy's parents had a black tie dinner party that, for Christmas that they held every year. And during that party, their house burned to the ground. Um, she moved and her parents moved next door to my parents where I moved home right after back, coming back from New Orleans. And effectively, he was the, the boy next, next door. door. Yeah, he was the boy next door. But a really good thing came out of a really bad thing. The night of the fire, um, you know, my parents had this party annually and uh, it was kind of interesting to have 40 of your best friends witness your worst disaster. And so, I mean, they even moved the bar out to the street. People were carrying paintings and furniture, et cetera. But uh, afterwards, you know, we, we moved in next to Ridley's parents and the rest of the We've been married history. a long time. Yeah. <laughs> the house is this early single house in Charleston. It does not have the piazzas, which came in a little bit later. The piazzas are the side porches that are so typical in Charleston. But this is just a little bit earlier than that. It's never been painted and it can't be painted. It's on the exterior. On the exterior. Yeah, it's, it's a stucco um, finish on the exterior. And some people might walk by and think, what is it? why don't you fix the outside of your house? But that's really what we think is so beautiful about it. On the way to our kitchen, I want to show you our elevator. So this is a little vestibule and here is our elevator. This gets my father upstairs and all of our luggage and it'll get us when we get older. So this is what uh, we bought this space from this giant dining room. I think it was genius because it goes all the way up to the third floor and we don't miss the size of the dining room. We, how many feet is this would you say Ridley? Five or six feet. Yeah. So, and now we walk through into our downstairs bar, uh, essential for entertaining. And um, I love the pop of color that Betsy put in here with the orange burlap wallpaper and uh, the chandelier from Circa. Okay, so speaking of entertaining, tonight we have some guests coming, and I decided to make a classic 1980s recipe, chicken marbella. I don't know if anybody remembers the Silver Palette cookbook, but it was all the rage, and it's such an easy, nice uh, chicken dish, but you have to marinate for about 24 hours. So I've got it going. I will be putting it back in the refrigerator, don't worry. Yeah. But in our other bowl. This is, uh, our, a friend of ours gave us camellia bowl. This is a very classic 
Charleston piece and you put water in it and this is where you float camellias um, and, and this is how you preserve them during the day and so we love it and it adds you can get these at a, a wonderful jewelry store actually on King Street in Charleston called Krogan's Jewel Box and it's a really not to be missed if you come to Charleston you definitely want to check out what they've got all kinds of jewelry of course estate jewelry but or also not. these kind of <laughs> <laughs> I like it. The kitchen was actually a great find for the house. This kitchen was done in the 1990s, believe it or not, and it still looks pretty classic. And so that was one of the joys. We didn't have to do the kitchen. Um, it looks out on our courtyard and um, it works for our family. It's a transition from the original 1780 main house to the annex building in the back, which was the kitchen and laundry and sleeping quarters above. They were separated until the 1990s when this was added. What do they call it when you do this? Like a comma or something or a hyphen? A hyphen. This is hyphen. The kitchen is timeless. It's got soapstone countertops, plenty of natural light, simple white cabinetry, stainless steel appliances. It's not trying to be over the top. It's, it's not necessarily m the most current, but it's certainly not dated at this point. Yeah, we were thrilled when we found it. She's the, Betsy's the chef, I'm the sous chef. He's great at cleanup. I'm a great bartender too. <laughs> this kitchen is more intimate than a modern one. This house, being 1780, it was never going to be an open plan uh, uh, house. And so we, you embrace it. And you, it, uh, but it, you can walk through and people come in here and I don't care where the kitchen is. If it's on the roof, people are going there. Doesn't matter. So you do need space for that. But I like the intimacy of it and I, I have already mentioned there's so many restaurants here in Charleston. To me, coming as a second home, it's really nice not to look at the kitchen and feel obligated to always be cooking. It's a great breakfast bar. When you love to entertain, you love to uh, use different dishes. And I bought this set actually on eBay. I think these are so adorable. They're little um, puzzles. puzzles. So you look at the different pictures and they mean different things. This is don't put all your eggs in one basket. You have to figure it out. I think it's called a rebus. Is that right? Um, this one's a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. So lots of fun uh, ways to just entertain your guests in subtle ways. Another um, thing that's very classic Charleston is this tobacco leaf pattern. Uh, Motaheda makes it and a lot of people register for this with their wedding, but it's a 1700s uh, from Charleston pattern that Originally. a lot of Charlestonians had. This is not an antique, but it's a great reproduction. Well, how would you describe our style? I love our style. I mean, <laughs> I married you, and so that, that makes it all the better. Well, I would say, um, as far as decorating, we love uh, antiques. We've always loved antiques. Uh, we love family things. We love things that uh, have meaning that we can bring into it. But another love of both of ours is contemporary art. And um, for a long time, I actually wrote an art blog that you can still pull up called Art Stormer. And I was covering emerging artists that uh, you could afford. Um, one of my big mantras has always been that your art doesn't have to match your sofa. And that's really big. And you'll notice when you tour this house, the art does not match your sofa. <laughs> We're now in our family room. This used to be the kitchen and laundry for the property. Um, you can see the original beams, the original brick walls, the original fireplaces. One of them is blocked up now, but the um, other one is still a fireplace. Um, they're huge, as you can see, and um, we love it. It's cozy. This is sort of like our winter uh, retreat back here. So we watch TV, we've uh, got some fun art on the walls. This is a piece by Lane Binion um, that is a makeup counter. He studied with Wayne Tebow in Utah. He's actually a medical illustrator and he thought, what is the modern pie counter? Uh, Wayne Tebow is very famous for that painting or cakes. And he thought department store makeup. So I love this piece. Uh, it's a great reminder of the things all women love. I love this, this lamp we have here. Betsy found it at a local um, shop and it's just a fun piece. Yes, it's, it's meant to be hydrangeas out of copper. So different. I love it. 
So uh, we bought this giant couch. When we moved in, it was right after COVID. Everybody was hunkering down, but there was nowhere to buy furniture. So in order to get this large sofa, I had to buy it um, covered in something else. And then I redid it and I put some industrial grade fabric here because I'm hoping someday I'll have grandchildren and they can do whatever they want, spill whatever they want. It's gonna come off. So I love this sofa. Uh, we hang out here all the time. We do puzzles over here. We have small dinner parties as well. We play cards, we play mahjong. We love games. So this room is just meant to be all about family. So we're now gonna transition upstairs. This used to be an open stairwell into this space and the room above was an office, but we wanted to create a bedroom suite up there. So we closed it off just like the old fireplace and put a door to a tiny set of stairs that go up to the guest bedroom. We're now coming up into our guest bedroom suite. This used to be two floors of living space. It's now a, a bedroom, a bath, and another little room we call the bedroom. We'll take you up there in just a minute. But I think what's fun is to see this actual bathroom that Ridley transitioned from a, a tiny bedroom and it really functions well for guests. So come on in. Welcome to our bathroom here. Um, we, here's the old fireplace with the Victorian insert in it. We just left it as it is. We retained the original 1800, 1790 paneling on the wall and created a new bathroom. The beams are still in place. We've got toilet, a washer and dryer here, and a shower. And the original wood floors from the 1790s. Well, they're in a separate annex building out here. So when guests come, they can have a screaming baby or uh, uh, they can go and sleep and nobody hears them and we don't hear them and it's great. We're gonna now go back into the bedroom and upstairs to a little room we call the bedroom. Come on. So there's really only a room for about one person to go up this tiny stairwell. So I'll take you up. I went on a trip to India uh, in 2017 and I fell in love with all of the fabrics that were just those hand block printed fabrics. So for this room, we decided to actually pad the walls. It kind of feels even quiet when you talk in here, it's so insulated. And then we trimmed it with this uh, banding just to give it a little oomph. And there's really only room for one single bed. And it's just such a wonderful place to close off. I love the doorway, it's sort of got a angle to it. Um, it's just a special little space. You can see Roman numerals on all of the beams. And that was where when they built the house, they laid out all the beams to remember exactly like putting a puzzle together where each would go. And so those little remnants of the past are, are seen. So you can see number nine, number eight, number 12. I don't even know. Maybe I'm not doing a very good job with my Roman numerals, but I do know that's what it is. Over the past 30 years, Charleston's changed incredibly, as has Nashville, as has our whole country. Um, Hugo made a big impact in this city. And um, like I said, this, this house did not flood, which was great. Yes. But, but, but all that insurance money brought in a wonderful um, time for renovating houses in this town. And Charleston is now one of the premier destinations in America because of it. Yeah, and I think uh, the, no the number of people who are open to meeting you when you move to a new place like this has been really special. Um, our neighbors are wonderful. Uh, you walk down the street, you see people, you get to know their dog. I mean, it's just a fabulous place to, um, I guess, retire or, or live. The thing that makes a house come alive is the people that visit you in it. I mean, it's all about, for us, our family and having guests and welcoming them, cooking, having dinner parties. Uh, my husband playing charades. Playing charades. And my husband makes a mean martini. I can tell you that. She's a classic. I mean, she's, she likes them shaken. She likes vodka and a little bit of olive juice. Or a Lille. She'll do a Lille martini. Yeah, every now and then. But uh, he also makes some good uh, old fashions. All right, let's go see the rest of the house. We're now back in the main house and we're going to head upstairs. Come on up. Okay, one of the things that is fun is this lambrequin. We have three of them on every level uh, in the hallway. Uh, they were really difficult to make because all of the windows are a little bit irregular. 
and I say it's a little bit Dr. Seuss green, but they're really playful and fun, yet they harken back to sort of the classics. We, we credit Brocksmith and Coleman in, in New Orleans and New York for helping us pull this together. Yeah. So this is our library. We spend a ton of time here. Traditional Charleston houses, oftentimes the main parlor would be on the second floor, which is unusual in most houses in most cities, but here this is very common. So we um, love decorating this room with a really colorful palette, lots of fun colors, oranges, greens, uh, wild plants. Um, and I had this uh, photograph by Jeffrey Milstein, which I absolutely adore, which again, uh, echoes the playfulness of the decorating style that we have. And it is actually an aerial view of Coney Island. Before drones. Well before drones. So uh, he actually flies over these wonderful iconic places and photographs them from the sky. And you can just stare at this for hours. We bought these um, vases when we were in New Orleans when my son got married from a store on Magazine Street called Sood. And it is a, a store that specializes in items from Sicily. And I love these uh, sort of, I have to say, a king and a queen on either side of the mantle, just very sculptural and again, playful. This is actually the first piece of art that I bought. I gave it to Ridley as a gift. Um, it is a tiny little miniature circus. If you know me well, you know I'm wild about anything miniature. It was done by a prisoner and it's all made of gum wrappers and probably spit and glue but it's super playful as well and people always want to comment and stare at that for hours we absolutely love putting this in the middle of the room and it's a great conversation piece i love this little sculpture i, I carried it back from india our trip last year and i hand carried it for two weeks and i'm proud that it did not break good for you ridley so the orange in the room was really inspired by this fabric which is called the vegetable tree and it's by Sven 10. It's a, a, a Swedish company or a Finnish company. Um, it's actually a nonprofit that produces these fabrics. It was um, designed in the 1940s. And so when you purchase it, it goes to the nonprofit. But there's so many wonderful colors in here. I just absolutely adore it. And so we picked the boldest color and made this monster of an orange sofa but it is so happy. We enjoy spending time here. People look great in photographs in it. It's great fun. I love how that Mamie Eisenhower era fabric can look modern and fresh even today. I agree. But the best part about this room is what Ridley did with the bar. Because we're upstairs in the library and so far from the kitchen, we needed a bar on this level. So we created this um, tall bar piece right here. It had to be tall in order to get the plumbing lines down. Uh, one of our favorite pieces of art is above it. It's a photograph of a tower in Nashville called the WSM Tower. And this is the reason Nashville is Music City. It is the technology that could, you could hear the Grand Ole Opry from Nova Scotia to Tijuana. And that's why Nashville is the music capital uh, as it is today because of technology done in 1930. So one of the great things about this room is that it overlooks trad. And not only does it overlook, we have a balcony. So this is a jealousy window, window, and you raise the window, and you open the two panels, and you walk out. So here we are out on trad, and this is the old part of the walled city. We have our flags out every time we come. We have got the South Carolina flag and the Tennessee flag, and it's just a wonderful place to be. Uh, Mrs. Frost put this on in 1916, this balcony. She started the Preservation Society of Charleston. And so um, it's, a, it's a wonderful old uh, 18th century balcony from a house that was being demolished back then. And we get to be the beneficiary of it now. If someone walks in our house for the first time, I think they could easily say our house is playful. It's fun. It is um, beautiful, but it's also got Umph. The yeah. art gives it a lot of the umph, I think. Yeah, we love color, um, we love antiques, but uh, the main thing is to make our guests feel comfortable and have a great time. Um, in general, I love people walking around and looking at different pieces of art and then describing how people actually produce that art. Um, many times it's involving some, some method that you can't believe someone could achieve on paper, I'd say.
This is an etching by Elizabeth O'Neill Verner from the Charleston Renaissance. She lived just down on the corner, and this is in 1930, showing this very house in, as it looked in 1930. So now we're gonna go upstairs to the third floor. We could take the elevator, but it's much more fun to walk. Come on. Okay, we're at the top of the stairs, but I have to show you this. Um, I mentioned before that in my art blog, I was always encouraging people to buy emerging artists. And so the internet has been a boon to that. And I actually found this photographer on Instagram. And what she does is she dresses up her dog like famous artists. So she has some that are, you know, Van Gogh. This one is uh, Yoyo Kasama with the pumpkins. Uh, if you know this artist, you'll recognize it immediately. But Again, affordable art, um, have fun. That's the whole point. And this wall used to be the door to the bathroom. And All right. It, and yeah. it was a tiny little bathroom here and you're about to see what it became. We're now going into our guest bedroom up here on this side of the house. So this room is great because I think all of our guests feel like they're in a giant uh, suite in a hotel uh, and the light is really what sold me on this house in so many ways up here. It's all about rooftops here in Charleston. And at every view, you're gonna see either a church steeple or some kind of wonderful rooftop. Uh, we chose to leave this in a very light blue and just keep it a very simple palette. But the, the real thing we did was add this bathroom. This was a wall and we added this door and we uh, gutted the bathroom and extended it into the other bedroom to create a shower. Added simple marble finishes and gave someone a countertop and it made it a really functional bathroom for a guest. This is a wonderful feature of the house. These are earthquake rods. They were put in after a devastating earthquake in Charleston in 1888 or something like that. And um, they go completely through the house on every floor and across the house on every floor. And we, th they, um, this house obviously survived that earthquake, but many of Charleston's houses did not. And, um, and we just left it is part of the history. The fireplace and the curved walls and the, and the small closets were here. I'm not sure that they were necessarily original, but they are old. They could easily be 150 years old, but they may not be original to the house. And we did um, just little valances. There are uh, room darkening shades underneath that, but we kept everything really light. Uh, so we echoed the curving, even in the bed, we, we chose something that had curves to it. And even down to the lampshades, these are just scalloped lampshades and it just brings harmony to the room we think. All right and now we'll take you into the second bedroom on this floor. All right so you can see the, her, uh, the earthquake rods coming through again. This is the a, this room actually was about the same size as the other bedroom but we borrowed the space to create a, the shower for the other bathroom, a linen closet and a full bath for on this level as well as the elevator comes on this level. So it's still a wonderful size room, but it creates another full guest suite and an elevator to get up here because we are on the third floor. Okay, so we mentioned we had an apartment here in Charleston uh, before buying this larger house. And so we were able to bring a lot of the furniture again and repurpose it in this room. Um, so, you know, really the beds and everything is mostly the same. I did purchase this piece, which is a 1920s bathing suit. I thought it was, again, really playful and fun. I got it at the Antiques and Garden Show in Nashville, and I think it just really makes the space as a focal point. But the best feature of this room is its own sun deck with a view of the city. So we come through past the elevator and we head on out. Now we're here on the sun deck with a view of the city of Charleston, an iconic view with the St. Michael's and St. Philip's over there. Um, we love it. It's all about the rooftops again. Um, coming out here, you've got the uh, resurrection ferns that are growing on the sides of buildings. These come back every year. Uh, they look dead all winter and then all of a sudden poof and they just show up all over buildings, etc. You can kind of see on this side of the house the outside of the earthquake rods as well as the finish of the stucco and I think I mentioned some people may look at that and think why don't you fix the side of your house but this is actually a really difficult technique and the, the plaster workers how long were they here four months or something uh, plastering the outside and securing it. We also have a view of our neighbors the Haywood Washington house it's a historic house yep. in Charleston and their garden is our next door neighbor. 
I think what makes a home is the people who are in it and the, pe the guests that surround us here. It's, um, it's joyful to have people here. We're having a dinner party tonight. This is a community. This is not a resort town. This is a, people live here and we know our neighbors and, and it, being a part of a community is what gives soul to any home. Yeah, one of the really charming things I've discovered in Charleston is if you have people over, um, oftentimes the next morning, someone will slip a note through the um, mailbox slot, uh, a little handwritten note. It's really so gracious and kind, and uh, it's a neat little tradition because you don't actually have a post, a post box here to send out mail. It only can be delivered in. So otherwise you walk to the, um, the post office, yeah. So we're here outside of our house on Trad Street, and this is the old original front door to the post office. And we're gonna go in the family entrance where the, our main door is. So come on. This is very typical, narrow little walkway. It's very typical Charleston to our front entry door. Here you can get a much better understanding of how this house works. Uh, we, we renovated this area of the property and re-landscaped, put the palm trees in. Uh, we built a bike shed back here to sort of mimic the house, the, the annex building, and give us a place for our bikes and our floaties and whatever we take to the beach. And it also hides the view of the cars. It's super charming and uh, we love it. We sit out here all the time, here's our fire pit. And you can see this is the annex building back here with the laundry and the kitchen. And here is the 1990s hyphen with our, with our kitchen in it, our the new kitchen in it. And then you can see the original main house from 1780. The brick is old brick reclaimed from all around Charleston. This, is, this would have probably been a working yard with laundry and privies and all kinds of things. So I doubt it looked like this in the 1780s. And here we are as you walk back to the back of our house. These are tea olives. They're usually small bushes. These are very, very old trees, but they really, most people used to see on them as small bushes and they smell wonderful shortly, th later this spring, they'll be blooming. And here's our bike house and our little gate. Here's our golf cart, very typical Charleston. You get a lovely view of the rear of our annex building in all three stories. All right, Ridley, I am starving. How about let's go get something to eat? Let's go. All right. Bye, bye, bye Homeworthy. Home Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.